see here that I have um, two tracks. The first one says profit, the other one says break, and we're just going to um, mute break right here, actually just turn it off right there. And I'm just going to play you what I have in this profit one. You'll hear it's just two chords. Okay, so those are my two chords, and let's just assume that I want to, um, that I want to put an arpeggiator on this. So I have an arpeggiator right here. Let's hear how that sounds. And so as you guys probably know, um, there's a whole bunch of different effects or a different uh, parameters to the arpeggiator effect. The first one is rate, which is really cool because you can uh, mess with, well, I'll just mess with them and show you how. So you can see how fast the arpeggiation goes. And what I would like to mess with right here is the style, which will basically say how, what order you play the notes in. So that's a really cool, that's a really cool effect. It's really useful in a lot of regards. But you'll notice that what's coming out of this track right now is actually an audio track. It's not actually MIDI. So the way that the normal signal chain works in Ableton is it goes from the MIDI clip into the MIDI effect into the instrument that's playing that MIDI into audio effects or whatever. Because So it starts as MIDI, it gets converted into audio by the instrument, and then it comes out as an audio effect. So someone asked me basically how you route the output, the MIDI output, not the audio output, from that arpeggiator into another uh, MIDI track in order to be saved, right? Because right now, basically, those arpeggiator notes are being played, but they're not being saved. They're not being recorded anywhere as MIDI. They're being recorded as audio into whatever um, uh, audio file I'd like to record here. So the way that you do that is you have to actually have the clip with the MIDI effect separate from the instrument. And that's basically how you do it. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So the first thing you'll see right now, I have the MIDI clip. And I'll show you the MIDI clip right here. Here it is. Um, on on the same track as you have the instrument, in this case, a in this instrument rack right here. So what you have to do is separate those. So the first thing we're going to do is going to make a new um, MIDI rack. I'm going to press Command Shift T to do that, and I'm just going to call this MIDI clip. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this this original clip that I was playing with my note information. I'm going to drag it into MIDI clip. So, but if I play it now, look, nothing happens. You can see at the bottom, I'm just getting some some um, some indication that the MIDI note is coming out, but I'm not getting any actual sound. So, the way that I'm going to do this now is I'm going to route this into into my uh, track that originally had the instrument. So, I'm going to go ahead and press I O over here. I'm going to go MIDI two in my my MIDI clip track MIDI two. And here's the track profit. You'll see that even though it's I'm having MIDI coming out here, as you can see from this little bouncing dot here, nothing is coming into profit. And the reason is I have to do monitor in. Okay. And now you can see that I'm getting basically the same sound as I was before, but it's so the the result is the same because I'm a. Uh, just taking the MIDI, I basically have taken the, what functioned as one track before and split it into two things. The MIDI clip is separate from the um, the actual audio track. So the, why would you do this? The reason is that now you can basically intercept the MIDI in the profit track and record those notes. So I, what I'm going to do here is, oh, and and this is really important actually, is whatever MIDI effects you want to record the output of, in this case the arpeggiator, Make sure you take those off the track that has the instrument and put it into the MIDI clip track or the the whatever track just has the MIDI clips. And the reason is, look at just just notice this. So um, if you look at this uh, this right here, this um, uh, I don't know what you call it, this gauge, this level meter right here, you'll see that even though you're hearing this arpeggiator that has all these little notes, the the MIDI meter is only going up once. Watch this just on the downbeats. And the reason that it's doing that is the, the MIDI that's actually coming out of this track is just that one chord hit. It's not doing all the MIDI notes. So watch what happens when I take this arpeggiator and drag it 
into this. Watch how the MIDI meter changes. You can see now that it's bouncing up a lot because all those notes independently are coming out. So, right now it's basically sounding the same, so why would you do it? I'm gonna show you why. So if you press record here on the profit track, and you go ahead and um, pre re record in one of these slots like this, and press play, you'll notice when I double click on this recording clip that all the different MIDI notes are coming through, which is really handy, right? What's also cool is that what I like to do, I like to, while this is recording, I go into this MIDI effects and I change these. So I'll mess with the different parameters. And play with them around a little bit, right? And now that I go back to the profit or to, to the record the clip that I just recorded and double click, you'll see that it's not only recorded the the arpeggiators, it's recorded all the changes I've done. So now you can go in and you can edit them because sometimes you want like, I mean, what I like to do actually is have like one chord be um, at one, uh, uh, what's it called again, rate, and the other chord be at a different rate, right? So it's like, so one chord will be uh, at 16th notes, the rest one will be at 24th notes. And so that way it can go back and forth and provide some variation. So now you've got them all as MIDI, so you can actually play them. I can actually go back and just turn this clip off and actually hold on. See. Oh, sorry, I have to record this right. Right, and now it's going to play the notes, even though there's no arpeggiator in this um, profit track anymore, it still has the sound of an arpeggiator because the MIDI clip has those arpeggiated notes already recorded into it. So like I said, once it's in there, you can loop sections, you can move things around, you can delete notes, you can add, make all kinds of different variations. So this is really cool if you're just kind of looking... You want some sort of arpeggiator sound, but you don't want the kind of standard ones. Um, you don't want to be super repetitive. You can go in there and you can edit it, which is really awesome. Okay? So that's one thing that I wanted to show you.